Everyone is talking about open source large language models, but how well do they work and should you use them? Let's find out. Welcome to episode 15. In the past year, OpenAI released GPT 3.5 and GPT 4, two breakthrough proprietary large language models. Most people have used them with ChatGPT, but you can also use OpenAI's API to build your own applications with these models. Google and Amazon are creating competing models, and there has been an explosion of free open source models supported by companies like Meta. With so many choices, you're wondering, are open source LLMs as good as proprietary ones like GPT-4? What are the pros and cons of open source LLMs? How should I get started? Let's explore these topics by comparing an application running with both GPT-4 and an open source LLM. Afterward, I'm going to give you some specific advice for navigating these complex choices. In episode four, I demonstrated unified natural language query with GPT-4. I showed you how your users can get answers from databases by asking simple questions instead of using complex reporting tools or learning SQL. The solution works, but Using GPT-4 has potential challenges. Your legal and data security policies may prevent you from sending data to OpenAI or Microsoft Azure, your two options for accessing GPT-4. Beyond that, GPT-4 can be expensive or slow depending on your use case. Ideally, we'd like an alternative open source option, so we spent a few months exploring options. We constrained our choices to models small enough to run on a modern MacBook Pro laptop. The most effective model we found was a quantized version of the Find Code Llama 34BV2 model, which I'll just call the Find model for this video, released by a company of the same name. Find optimized this model for writing code, which is what we need. Here is a working demo. The scenario is the same as episode 4, except we modified it to use Find instead of GPT-4. Once again, we have a database consisting of tables you would expect to see in a bank's CRM, such as customers, credit scores, and products. With this application, a bank manager can ask questions about the data, such as, what is the name of the customer who has the largest mortgage loan? Answering this question requires LLM agents to come up with a plan, generate SQL code for getting the data, and analyze it. This is a hard problem and the holy grail of business intelligence. Additionally, we made it more realistic by adding messy data. The correct answer is Roberta Freeman, and the open source find model is able to solve it just as GPT-4 did. Now let's begin comparing find to GPT-4. First, notice how much more efficiently find writes the SQL code. It can generate more complex single queries to answer questions, whereas the GPT-4 version generated simple queries that took multiple prompts. Subjectively, Find looks almost as good as GPT-4, but we want a more objective way to compare them. So we created an evaluation framework similar to episode six. We started with these eight questions and built an evaluation framework to run each through the GPT-4 and Find models three times and average the results. Here are the results. We are comparing the performance of the proprietary GPT-4 model hosted by OpenAI and the free open source find model running on my laptop. The number of API calls identifies how many requests were made to the model. Find takes fewer calls for the reason I mentioned earlier. It is better at writing complex SQL queries. Let's look at the completion time in seconds. Find is about four times slower, but this is more impressive than it seems. Obviously, the hardware is the biggest factor. Find is running on a $2,000 consumer laptop while OpenAI is running on Microsoft's cloud infrastructure, the best in the world. Moreover, we can significantly improve Find's performance with a few minor changes. Now let's look at the most important metric, how often the models correctly answer the question. At first glance, neither result is particularly exciting. However, a closer look at the questions and options for overcoming the problems tells a much different story. Let's start with GPT-4. It got only one question wrong, notice the air quotes, on all three attempts. Here is the question. How many different checking account types are there and what are they? A closer inspection of the response reveals ambiguity around the word type. When I slightly reworded the question, 
which is what I would do as a user, it gave me the right answer. So in practice, GPT-4 is closer to 100%. Find also made errors that we could correct with a few application tweaks or user behavior. It failed every time on the question, how many products does the person who most recently opened a mortgage have? For the same reason. The model fell into our messy data trap. It assumes the mortgage table has a user ID, when in reality this field is only available in the products table. Adding mortgage table has no GUID column to the prompt instructions solve the problem. So with these two quick fixes, find is looking much better. The speed is now comparable to GPT-4 and accuracy is up to 88%. I'm also confident I could make a similar fix and get accuracy over 95%. These are just eight simple questions, so these metrics don't tell us a lot in isolation. The big takeaway is that both Find and GPT-4 can give good results when you customize them for your application. Let's now talk about what we've learned and what you should do. I'll start with your questions from earlier. Are open source LLMs as good as proprietary ones like GPT-4? GPT-4 is still better than open source models. It generalizes better across all tasks and still performs very good at specialized ones. However, the open source models are catching up quickly and can be better, faster, and cheaper when customized for your task. What are the pros and cons of open source LLMs? For most companies, the biggest pro is that you retain full control over your data. Additionally, you have more flexibility to build an optimized solution that is faster and cheaper to operate, factors which will maintain your competitive edge. The con is that open source LLMs take more expertise and work. How should I get started? Well, here's my advice. Start by creating a working prototype with the smartest model available, currently GPT-4, to evaluate the business feasibility of your solution. If policies prevent you from using GPT-4, build a prototype outside of your firewall with generated data. After proving viability, you can optimize for speed, cost, competitive edge, or security with open source alternatives that will take additional investment. This optimization process can take many paths. For example, you could use GPT-4 to create the agent plan and then run all SQL queries on a highly optimized large language model inside your infrastructure. Or you could use a lightning quick open source model like Mistral 7b for answer generation and fine for SQL. This is an engineering task and your options are limitless. Finally, ignore the noise all over YouTube about incremental improvements of new models based on generic benchmarks. Just pay attention to the big leaps forward, such as the improvement from GPT 3.5 to GPT 4. Your time is better spent on activities like defining the problem, selecting the right data, or creating an evaluation framework. On that note, there are thousands of YouTube videos hyping AI models, but this is the only one giving you actionable advice on what you should do. So join our community of serious builders by subscribing and be sure to sign up for our email newsletter so you don't miss an episode like this one. I've also picked out the next video you should watch, episode six, where I show you how to make an evaluation framework like the one I showed you today.